Fox Latest Insanity, take two. I wanted to share with you the mess that's currently on my bench. Um, this has kind of developed from the ADF-4351 project that I shared with you. Um, what we've got now, this is the LCD backpack, as it's called. This is based on the thing called the Micromite. Um, this is primarily doing the graphical stuff for the touchscreen, which provides me with a display of what the frequent, current frequency is, and also the ability to enter new frequencies and um, control what the frequency the actual output is set to. This also controls this ADF4351 board, which is the board we used last time. But in this application, I'm taking my 10 megahertz shack reference as the reference frequency, and I'm generating a 100 megahertz signal, which I'm using as a clock for this ADF5355 evaluation board, which is over here. This board here is a clone of the Arduino Zero based on the SAMD21 processor. This supports the double precision maths needed for the register calculations for the ADF5351. So the way that this basically works is when this initializes, it initializes the ADF4351 to 100 megahertz and then kind of forgets about it. Then every time you enter a new frequency in here, apart from validating that it's in the right uh, frequency range, this then squirts that frequency as a string across a serial port, which is in fact these two lines here. This processor over here is running some software developed in the Arduino IDE. That receives the string, converts it to a floating point number, and then does the maths necessary to generate the 13 register values to set up the ADF5351 for that frequency at the 100 megahertz clock. It then squirts those values over this bus here, which is an SPI interface between the Arduino and the ADF5355. Hopefully you can see my grotty spectrum analyzer that's 3,000 years old. You can see that that's monitoring the output of this. The frame rate isn't very good, unfortunately, but it's kind of the best I can do to demonstrate it. But there's a carrier right now generated at 5.5 gigahertz. The ADF5355 will support RF output all the way from 54 megahertz up to 13.6 gigahertz. What could be simpler? So this is the fairly simple software that I've stolen from various places that's running on the Micromite. So 90% of this software is doing the screen graphics and the touch screen and all of the other things that go with that. The only thing of interest really, these six register values here are the values used to set the 100 megahertz clock on the ADF4351 that I'm using. If you wanted to do something different, you'd need to change that. And then the only other thing of interest really is right down the bottom. So instead of um, doing any register calculations or anything like that, once it's got a frequency from the user, it simply squirts it across COM2 and that's all that's doing there. Um, so if you wanted to use a different COM port or a different way of communicating with the ADF5355, this is the software you'd need to change. Now Andy, who's G4JNT, uh, one of the cleverest people on the planet, all hail G4JNT, has written this piece of software here, uh, ADF5355 Calculator. Um, it's free to download from his website, I'll include a link. And I've used this to test my software. So over here you've got the maths that's needed to generate the register values for the ADF5355. And what I've done is use Andy's software. I've put the frequency that I'm looking at up here, uh, auto set the output divider, and then you can copy and paste these register values from here. And then what I've done is um, simply run the same frequency through my software and make sure that my numbers match. And as long as my numbers matched, I know Andy's a genius, so my software must be right. It's as simple as that. That's the way that I've done this. The other thing that I've done, which I'll link in as well, um, is to generate a very simple piece of software here just to, je to test the SPI interface. So this doesn't do any register calculation. This software here declares um, a, a, an, an array uh, and this, in this case, this example is 500 megahertz with a 100 megahertz clock. These are the 13 register values I need for that frequency output. And all this does is squirt it over the SPI interface. 
to test that the SPI interface is working before I added the maths as well. But the main software that's running on my uh, Arduino Zero clone is this, uh, this software here which does the calculation. It receives the string, converts it to a double floating point number and then uses that within the mathematics to generate the 13 register values. Once it's generated the 13 register values it validates that they're correct and then it squirts them over the SPI interface to the device itself. It's fairly straightforward. I've done a lot of uh, reading up of the spreadsheet and um, spreadsheet I'm sorry I mean the data sheet and also uh, I read quite a lot about the SPI interface because the timing is fairly critical. Right at the top of the software you'll find a constant called debug. If you change that to be a one, then a whole pile of useful debug information and diagnostic information will come squirting down your USB serial line, which you can access on this device using the serial monitor. So if you were to set debug to one, reload the software, you could then watch it as it does its maths and it'll squirt out a whole load of useful information. So here's a very quick example of the logic analyzer output that's currently sat on the SPI bus between the Arduino Zero clone and the ADF5351. I've got it triggering on the chip enable line so when that goes low um, the, the, the logic analyzer is triggering. You can see clearly that there are 13 bursts of data going across the bus. If you were to zoom in on one of them you can begin to read what the uh, values are. This is because this ends in C we know that this is the last register this is register 13 and these are the values that are going in. This is a B so this is register 12, register 11 and so it goes on. You can um, quite clearly see how this works. If I click the start button and I now go into my software and change the um, change the value you'll see that's now triggered and again we've got a, a new trigger for a new set of data for a frequency for 1200 megahertz this is how i've been debugging the uh, comms between the uh, the two the two bits of kit um, this is using the uh, ds logic analyzer that i've got i'm sure you could use cheaper alternatives but this is a hundred pound logic analyzer which does a very good job at these high frequencies. You can always slow this SPI bus down for the purposes of debugging. The clock is currently set in the software at 10 megahertz. It actually looks like it's more, more like running at more like 12 and a half megahertz, but it's very, very quick, this transfer, uh, and it doesn't need to be anything like as fast as this. Um, so you could slow it down if you've got a different logic analyzer or if you're struggling to capture it.